Howdy folks, real quick video, uh, which I promised I would do sort of a couple of months ago, but unfortunately time has gone away from me. Um, the quick assembly guide for how to do a Haunter Culture Scarecrow Mini. So I'm just going to go through some of the tools that I would prefer to use when I'm making them, and the the, the types of glue and things like that. And then um, you can look up some lovely guides on YouTube and various bits of the interweb on how to paint these lovely minis with a bit of primer and such like. So without further ado, I'm just going to head straight over to the table to show you how we get this done. See you in a minute. Hello and welcome to the video. So here you can see the little scarecrow in his packet. That consists of four little pieces. But before I do that, I'm going to go over a few of the tools I'm going to be using. So this is Gorilla Glue. So this is the gel form of super glue, which is perfect because it doesn't run or go anywhere. It goes exactly where I dab it. So that's the one I usually use for model making. And then the other stuff I tend to use is this thing here called poly cement. So this basically welds the plastic together by sort of melting the two surfaces. It's great for model making, but for ease of use, I'm just going to stick with the super glue for this tutorial. Here are my tools. So first things first is a pair of snips. So if I want to remove any sort of large pieces of plastic, uh, I get these snips. They've got a nice flat edge there, so I can get right against the model, and it lets me take off the sort of bigger chunks as I'm going along. Uh, if you haven't got one of those, a sort of craft knife or scalpel will do the job as well. These are nice and sharp. They're perfect for sort of scraping along mold edges. They can also be used to cut things. So you can see underneath uh, the video here, there's a green board, which I use as my chopping board. So you can also use a craft knife to sort of take off those little bits of sprue or extra flash or bits that you don't really want. Uh, and the last thing I've got is if you've got one is these lovely little model files. So these are great if you've got a little bit of scrappiness you want to just sort of file away. But uh, yeah, they tend to be quite handy. Okay, so on to the model itself. So let's get this thing out of the packet. Ooh, bit fiddly, dropped all the bits. Right, so you see here we've got four little bits for your model. Uh, hopefully I can zoom this in a bit, okay. There we go, right in the middle. Okay, so these are the four little pieces. So you'll see there's a base. This is the main part of the scarecrow on his little pedestal. There's a little notch on the top there, which is going to be for the hat. And then there's another little notch at the bottom, which is going to peg into the board. Here's the hat. So you see there's a little bit of flash on there. There's a tiny square peg in the uh, hole in the middle for the head peg. And then the last piece is the pitchfork itself. So at the top of that is a little hand with a little bit of flash there I'll need to take off. And then back to the base, you can see there's a little hole right in the middle. Uh, oh, and a bit of flash there, so I'm going to take that off first. So I get my trusty snips and just sort of take that off, give it a nice smooth edge. If I had more time, I'd probably take the file to that as well. I'm just going to have a little check around. There's the hole for the main scarecrow peg, and then in those pumpkins, you'll see three tiny little holes which are going to be for your pitchfork. Uh, there's also some mold lines here which I'm going to gently remove with the edge of that little scalpel. You don't have to do this, and the way it's been set is made that that is really hard to see when you've got the model stood up on the table, so it shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so onto the hat itself. You can see there's tiny little bits of flash on the brim there where it was attached to the sprue. So I'm just going to clip those off. There we go. So take that first piece off. Oh, gone off camera there. Sorry about that. And then you see there's the square peg again. Uh, square hole, sorry, again. <laughs> uh, and then if I keep going around, there's the last bit of flash. So that's the other side of the hat where it was attached to the thing. Get that little clip. Take that off. Lovely. So now we've got our brim completely clean. I'm just going to use my nails just to sort of <laughs> take those last little bits off. Get that cleaned up. Beautiful. There we go. Right, then onto the scarecrow itself. So you'll see there's the peg at the top, which is actually reasonably clean. I think I can see a tiny bit of flash there up by the skull. Oh, yeah. So let's just go around it, just double check. So yeah, there's a tiny bit of flash there in the top. So I'm just again, I'm going to get my trusty snips, take that off. So that's going to allow the hat then to sit nice and flush. And then a lot of the scarecrows we found had a bit of extra flash down here at the bottom. So as soon as I can get this darn thing in focus. Ta-da! There we go. So the actual peg that goes in the base is quite small. So there's quite a bit of flash on the bottom of this one. There you go. So it should be a little square peg. So if you keep turning it, you'll just about see it. It sticks out about two, three millimeters. Uh, so I'm going to get my trusty snips here again and take that bit of flash off. It's quite a big chunk of the sprue there. All right, so give that a good clip. Tidy that up a smidge. Sorry, this has all gone off camera again. I have to work on my overhead camera. There we go, lovely. So you can see the, the actual peg itself is quite small. Oh, get it in focus, mate. Come on. So I'm just going to do a test fit here to make sure that's actually going to plug into the square bit there. So this is something you can do as you're going along, is just do little test fits to make sure that the, the pieces themselves will actually fit into those holes. Right, so just double checking the last piece, which is the pitchfork with the very last bit of the hand. 
on there and you can see there's a piece sticking up so that would have been attached to the sprue as well so I'm just going to remove that there we go see how that fits there against the hand so there's no like peg or anything it just sort of rests against it so I'll take my clippers and off they come there we go lovely So here you can now see the original casted model. So this was clear sort of resin and this was used to make the original mold. So I'm going to use this as my guide. You can also use the picture from the Scarecrow cardboard token that you got in your thing. Or just pause the video here and you can use this as a guide for your, uh, for your own construction as it were. But essentially I'm going to start with the Scarecrow itself pegging into the, the middle hole there. And you'll see the Scarecrow is sort of facing towards one of the corners with the larger pumpkin sort of behind them. So if you find the face of the scarecrow, yeah, see I've got that wrong there, so I'm going to turn it again. There we go. So the face of the scarecrow should be facing towards me now, towards that uh, that corner with the pumpkin directly behind the scarecrow. So, oh dear, some terrible camera work here. I'm going to get in there. There we go. Lovely. So just going to test fit that. It's really hard to sort of look at the model and uh, look at you guys at the same time <laughs> and at the camera. Um, right, there we go. So test fitted with the pumpkin right behind the scarecrow. So the next job is to put a little dob of glue on that peg. And I start faffing around and tapping those pumpkins. Do, 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 do. Right, there we go. Get my trusty Gorilla Glue out. So this, as I said, is a lovely gel consistency. So give it a little shake and then you can dab it. And because it's a gel, it won't run. It'll just sort of sit where you need it. So you only need a tiny, tiny amount. There you go. Sort of see the little tiny blob on the end there. That's literally all you need. And I'll just pop that into the hole without sticking it to myself. There we go. Right, so let that sit there for a minute just to let the glue set so super glue as we all know sets very very quickly so it shouldn't take very long so i'm just going to make sure there you go it's already kind of holding on tight so now that's set i'm going to move on to the pitchfork so the pitchfork itself is a little bit on the fiddly side so the hand of it will rest against that arm and the pitchfork has three prongs that will fit into those pumpkins that are directly behind. So there you go. You can sort of see at the top there, there's a, the, the hand that will rest against the arm. There we go. So this is me test fitting it before I glue it in. There we go. And then you'll see in the pumpkins, there are three tiny little holes into which the prongs of that will sit. There we go. You'll sort of see one of them in the middle there, and then the other two, obviously. Oh, there you go. There's a nice little view of the second one. So then I'm going to test fit that by popping that in those. It's a reasonably snug fit, so it should kind of hold on to itself, but obviously we need the glue there to kind of make sure that it won't fall apart again when I'm done. And you can see how that hand sort of rests up against the arm there. So to get myself started, take my trusty glue, pop that on the ends of the prongs, as these will be the fiddliest bits to get to once it's all glued together. Very tiny amounts. All you need is a little tiny dob on the end of each one. And then I'm going to pop those in there. And then make sure that hand is, oops, rested up against, the oh no. <laughs> so a little known fact, superglue actually needs water to activate. So if there's no moisture in the air, the superglue will not set. Uh, hence why when it comes in contact with your sort of greasy skin, it's going to set very quickly. Hence uh, why I want to sort of get away from it as quickly as possible. So here's me applying a little dob of glue then to the hand as well. So I'm going to have to very care. So this is this is a little bit fiddly. So I'm going to pop that in there. And I believe this is the point where, yeah, I slip because of my big fat fingers. Oh, yeah. Here we go. A bit of a mission. And there you go. I've stuck myself to the model. So please try and avoid that if you can. <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to bring it back into focus. There we go. So there's the hand draped over the end of the pitchfork and the three little prongs stuck in there. Respective pumpkins. Lovely jubbly, which only leaves the very last piece. Okay, so the very last piece is that lovely hat. So we've got to make sure that this is going to test fit there nicely. Had a bit of trouble getting it up again, fat fingers. Um, there's the peg. So you see it's they're all nicely squared off pegs, so you can only sort of orient them in four different ways. Uh, and the direction for this hat is to make sure that that sort of flyaway bit on the top is pointing away from the arm with that's holding the pitchfork. So it's going to be sort of going from uh, left to right from your perspective. There you go. 
Here's me trying to figure out which is left and which is right, because I'm terrible. Uh, at uh, directions and stuff. There we go. So get my trusty super glue, little dob on top. Again, tiny, tiny amounts, all you need. And then I grab that tip of the hat and just pop it on. And as I said, because it's square, it should then sit itself down into the correct position. And there we have it. A lovely behatted scarecrow ready to go onto your table. Um, and as we said in our recent update, we'd love to see if anybody can paint these. This one here is, it's a good idea to kind of give them a little wash with some soapy water before you go to ahead and paint them because there may be some of what's called um, mould. Um, oh, what do they call it? It's like a, it's to allow the plastic to fall out of the mould. So there may be a little bit of that still on there and that kind can interfere with the paint. So give it a little wash with some soapy water before you glue it all together. Then a spray up or some primer painted on and then you're ready to paint. And yeah, show us your pictures. If you guys decide to have a go at building these or print, um, painting them yourself, we'd love to see what you come up with. Lovely. Thanks very much, everyone, and I uh, hope you enjoy.